Hello dear students, this is Dr. Aisha Nazuk here. Welcome back to the channel Rao Hub, which is a holistic learning, uh, entertainment and information um, portal or a hub for a multiple and diverse set of audience. Uh, in this channel, you will find different type of playlists and uh, by the way, I would like to mention here that when I was about to start this channel, um, I got a couple of suggestions and comments from people that I should uh, not put in too many different types of videos on a single channel. Like uh, this channel contains videos on lecture of statistics, uh, probability theory, econometrics and interestingly uh, some apparently that people find apparently irrelevant uh, or different set of playlists that is, that is we have playlist on humor and uh, we have playlist on positivity and human behavior as well. Uh, so the reason for making this type of a channel um, is because I wanted to, when, when I started this channel, uh, this was the time when uh, globally we were undergoing a sort of a time of stress and, and a time where changes were difficult to accept because there was an issue of COVID-19 throughout the world. So at that time, I thought that uh, although I am a teacher and a resource person at a university and I should uh, take benefit of YouTube to stay connected with my dear students and my audience, um, in fact, sorry, my viewers of the channel, but I should also provide them some opportunity to learn positivity some opportunity to enjoy comedy as well. So that is why this is a trademark of this channel Rao Hub that you will find a different type of playlist on this channel. So you are more than welcome to explore this channel and the multiple playlists that exist here. Okay, so coming back to uh, the current video's topic which is how to construct pie chart and Pareto diagram. So first of all, Let's discuss how to construct a pie chart and why is it uh, relevant or this chart is required in, in this type of scenarios. As I discussed earlier that descriptive statistics is all about describing data sets and we take help from you know uh, graphs and charts to have a very bas basic sort of description of data set. So pie chart displays the data as a percentage of the whole, right? It displays the data as a percentage of the whole. So whenever our interest is to compare components with total, for example, we will have a data on the total family's budget and we have the component that uh, out of that total budget, uh, how many, you know, um, let's say dollars are spent on education and how many dollars are spent on entertainment and so on. So if we want to compare components with the total, then pie chart is a suitable option. Those of you who have also studied component bar chart, they know that the purpose of component bar chart is same, that we want to compare components or with the total or subtotals with the total. So uh, whether you should make a component bar chart or a pie chart is simply a matter of visual display. You know that if we make a component bar chart, actually let me show you the component bar chart here. Uh, here. So here is the component bar chart. So if, we have, if I make the component bar chart, uh, then what we do is we make the bars and then we slice them into their components. I have already discussed this. Uh, in my earlier lectures, but today we are going to discuss pie chart. So coming back uh, to the pie chart, it's all about whether you want to display data in bars or in circles. But the purpose of component bar chart and pie chart is same, that is comparison of the subtotals with the total. Okay, so as I said that we use a circle for pie chart so we know that a circle is a 360 degree rotation. So we have to divide the circle into different components. So how we are going to do 
we are we know that the total uh, you know rotation in a circle is 360 degree so how to decide which particular component should be assigned a particular angle we decide that using this formula angle size is equal to component part over sum of all parts into 360 degree right why because we want to determine the relative share of that component out of 360 and why out of 360 as i said that the circle has total rotation of 360 degree so let's say we have data on number of doctors working in various departments of a hospital and let's say this is the data right so the data is we have different department nephrology oncology pediatrics and general medicine so let's say uh, there are 22 doctors who are specialists in uh, kidney diseases, 23 who are specialists in cancer and tumors and so on. So let's say if I want to determine what should be the share of or the angle share of nephrology in the circle, I will divide 22 by the total which in this case is 180. So if I add all these observations, 22 plus 23 plus 45 plus 90, that comes out to be 180. So what I am going to do is for the de determining the angle share, I will divide the component that is in this case 22 divided by total which is 180 and then multiply by 360. So now I know that 44 degree angle should be reserved to nephrology. Similarly, I determine the angle shares for oncology, pediatrics and general medicine. So now you can easily see that if I add or take the sum of all these angles that is 44 plus 46 plus 90 plus 180 that will obviously be 360 because the angle shear is 360 in a, or the angle rotation in a circle is 360 degree. So this is how we can draw the circle. So this is a uh, pardon for a little bit inaccurate drawing of the circle. So this is the circle and we have to divide this circle in different shares. So we have seen above in the calculation that the share of nephrology is 44 degree angle. So what I am going to do is my reference line will be this one, right? So uh, just a moment. Okay, so uh, when I, I have already calculated that the angle share of nephrology is 44 degree. So what I am going to do is I am going to take help of any angle measuring geometrical device which is I can use the protector or I can use the compass. Uh, so uh, assuming that you know how to measure angles, so let's say that I my reference line will be this one. So I will start measuring from here and uh, then by using any angle measuring device I will measure and I will stop at 44. So, this is the share for nephrology. Similarly, when I have to determine the, you know, uh, share for oncology, of course, the reference line uh, will be this one, the new starting line here. Uh, let me change the color. So, the left reference line, when I start for oncology, will be yellow one. So, I will take a little uh, pause here because of azan break here. So when we have to decide uh, the angle for oncology, we calculate that uh, it was 46 degree. So we'll start, um, now our reference line will be this yellow one. So we'll start measuring the angle from this yellow line and we will keep on going until 46 degrees are completed. So assuming as I said that uh, you know how to measure angle using protector or compass or any uh, you know uh, basically these two tools are used protector or a compass to measure the angle so starting from this yellow line and we stop till uh, 46 degree angle is completed so let's say that 46 degree is completed uh, here on this line similarly when I have to draw the shear for pediatrics I will start from this green line and continue till 90 degrees are completed and so on so this is how a pie chart is made and in this case you have seen that I haven't done any shading in any of the uh, area of this um, 
or sector of the circle so it's up to you whether you can do the shading and then you can have a key here uh, in the side legend where you will mention that uh, for example a green shading represents the share for nephrology and a yellow shading represents the share for oncology and so on so it's up to you whether you want to write, write the information inside uh, the you know circle or as a legend or a key outside the circle so this is how a pie chart is drawn so now by having a look at this pie chart you can easily see that the greatest share is of general medicine as expected in any uh, general hospital that we have uh, more doctors for general medicine specialization and then uh, the second highest share is for pediatrics and so on so this is how you can you know compare the components with the total as I start uh, you know told you in the beginning that the purpose of pie chart is to compare the components with the total the next diagram that we are going to discuss is the Pareto diagram it is a bar chart simple bar chart uh, but the purpose of this bar, bar chart is to display the frequency of defect causes or you know causes behind any uh, errors for example if we have a let's say health insurance record system or uh, we want to see that uh, in, in that healthcare insurance claim how many of those are filed correctly and how many are filed incorrectly so let's say if we have data on the number of incorrectly processed claims that is consider that people are coming to your insurance company and uh, in fact into your hospital and they are filing some claims for the health care uh, treatment they have uh, obtained from your hospital so let's say we have different type of uh, insurance claim and some of them are incorrectly processed so let's say what we want to find out what are the reasons behind so we collect data and let's say we have data on uh, different types of you know causes behind incorrect claims so let's say procedural and diagnostic codes you know that whenever a hospital uh, maintains data on let's say uh, about the different departments or the patient reaching out to different departments of the hospital for different type of diseases for the purpose of you know a holistic um, uh, you know uh, file or a or a spreadsheet where they may put the data they may assign different types of codes to different type of diseases so let's say if there is uh, uh, occasionally there are some errors in, the, in those codes for example uh, for a patient going to nephrology department suppose that uh, you have to assign a code 1 but uh, due to a system error a code 11 was announced uh, assigned so we have uh, let's say 40 cases that are not correctly processed because there were some coding errors then patient information suppose in simple uh, you know example is suppose that the patient uh, gender is incorrectly um, recorded or the patient age is incorrectly recorded and because of that let's say the hospital has different policies for patient of different age groups so uh, the claim is not correctly processed because of the patient information not correctly recorded so there are let's say nine such cases so on and then we have pricing schedule that is different departments they charge different amount of uh, you know compensation or money for different services that they provide to the patients so let's say uh, the pricing schedule sometimes they are not correctly entered so there are 17 such cases where the pricing schedules were not entered correctly 10 times when there were some overall pro programming system error for example the um, you know the data management software where this data was kept that software became temporarily uh, you know corrupt due to a virus and later on that the virus scan was performed so these are the different types of errors that are uh, you know being uh, faced let's say in a scenario where we are uh, dealing in uh, patients putting different type of insurance claim to a hospital so how we are going to make uh, Pareto diagram is we will simply arrange this data according to the most frequent error followed by the next one so you can say that the most frequent error is procedural and diagnostic codes 
then the next is pricing schedule then program and system error and then patient information so the Pareto diagram is simply we are going to make a simple bar chart uh, but you see that the difference between a simple bar chart and a Pareto diagram is in Pareto diagram these bars they are conjoined that is there is no gap between uh, the next bar and the previous one so the uh, you know the bars uh, for procedural and diagnostic code this is drawn first because this is the most frequent error the next most frequent is pricing schedule so we have made a bar for pricing schedule and so on so you notice that uh, we have different observation we can mention the bar titles here by putting some sl slanting line you know uh, rectangles here and putting in the bar titles or we can make a legend and we can shade the bars for example we can shade the procedural and diagnostic one as red and pricing schedule as orange and so on and in that case we will uh, we should draw a key here where we should write down that which color represents which type of error so this is uh, about Pareto diagram and uh, once again for um, you know a quick recap that Pareto diagram is a sort of a simple bar chart where we are interested in analyzing the reasons for different types of defects or errors and we plot them using simple bars.